gonna see us make a solar stove that really works. What we're gonna do here is a parabolic stove. We previously made a parabolic stove for the world manual using a parabolic antenna and gluing many small mirrors, which was heavy and difficult to dispose of. Today we'll make a simpler, cheaper version that you can make at home. I hope it works. As we haven't tested it yet, it's called a parabolic stove due to its shape. Because we use a type of curve called a parabola, it appears when you make a cut in a cone. This one here, for example, oh, it's a parabola, and what's so special about this thing? Imagine this is a ray of light from the sun, okay? The moment it hits here on the parabola, if it's reflective, it will reflect somewhere. If you have another ray of sun that hits the parabola, it will also reflect here somewhere. If you have one more ray of sun that hits here on the parabola, it will reflect somewhere. Are you noticing that they all pass through this point here? This point is called the focus. And it means that the parabola works like a giant magnifying glass that concentrates all the sun rays into a single point. And that's why it's really cool for us to cook because we put something here, like a pot, a barbecue skewer. That's why we have a satellite dish. Imagine that this is not light, but a radio signal. Physically speaking, light and radio signal are practically the same thing, okay? The signal comes from the sky, hits the antenna, and goes all to the same point where you put a receiver. This makes the signal much stronger than if it didn't have all this reflection. And an interesting thing is that we don't need to do exactly the shape that is here. We can just take this little tip of the parabola and flatten it a bit. The antenna doesn't need to be so curved. The question now is how we assemble this 3D object and we are thinking of doing it with cardboard. A somewhat annoying challenge is that a parabola is not a piece of a circle, it's a more specific curve. So what did we do? We drew a piece of a parabola on the computer here, and from that we will create bases for segments that end up forming a kind of parabolic shell. I may not fully grasp what I'm saying, but you'll understand once it's done. Let's begin. I need two pieces of cardboard that will serve as a mold for the pieces of parabolic stove that I'm going to make. I'm using two sheets of paper, larger than typing paper, gluing them onto cardboard, and then cutting it out. Greater perfection leads to fewer errors in the end. It will start making sense now. I'm going to place these two molds 18 degrees apart from each other, and you can see that a little piece of the stove has already formed here. I need to figure out how this segment of my parabolic stove will work, and then replicate it several times. It's fancy, huh? If I were watching, I'd already leave a thumbs up below. The plan is to cover all of this with masking tape, creating a surface that closely resembles the final stove surface. We already have a piece of our parabolic mirror that will be the stove. I think what we're doing here is really cool. We're transforming a 2D drawing into a complex 3D drawing without using a computer or any other tools. It was more or less what we did with the submarine. We drew the submarine on a sheet of paper, and then we put it together, assembling everything on a cardboard to determine if its shape was anatomical. This was a major success with the submarine as it turned out to be highly anatomical. I was able to test it in real life. Long before we started to build, let's go. Carefully remove this, then cut on top of the tape that I established as a border, and then I glue it on top of a piece of Paraná paper. It could be cardboard, cardstock, the cardboard itself, no problem. And then I cut it out one more time. This is the most important template of all. Any tiny mistake I make will show up in the end. Now the real fun begins. I'm going to have to mark this template on the Paraná paper 20 times, using a very well sharpened pencil to be precise. I'm cutting with scissors, while Danny is in the back using a box cutter thinking it will yield better results. I'm going to fit one triangle into another. If it works, the tips can't fit together, only the base should fit. Let's see. Exactly. Do you know why the tip can't fit? Because this is not a flat figure. The tips will only fit when it forms the curve of the parabola here in the middle. Look at this. I have to confess to you that doing this thing is a bit harder than I imagined. The material gets soft, making it difficult to glue with precision. I don't think I'm gluing it precisely enough, but it's mostly correct in the end. This part is half the work, and it has an interesting shape.
Think of a butterfly in my stomach now. Will it join? Look, there was a little mistake at the tip here of about three millimeters. Here it fit perfectly. At the tip, there will be about three millimeters difference, but I think we have a beautiful parabolic shell. It's beautiful, but you noticed it's flimsy, so let's build a base for this thing to get hard and ensure the parabolic shape. So let's take eight cardboards, just like the one I used at the beginning, and join them into a kind of star here. I'll try to glue it right on the square so it's just right to make a parabola inside where we're going to fit what we've already done. To make it really strong, these cardboard walls will go on the outside. And in the end, we have a kind of a cradle exactly in the geometry of the thing. Whether the two fit together is another matter. No, I'm in doubt if it fit. I have the impression that it's a bit more closed. And now... It didn't fit perfectly. I don't know exactly what to do. There's a gap of about one centimeter here on all sides. The top part is a bit more closed than the bottom part. I'm going to try something daring here, which is to open the last segment I glued and see if this parabola opens by itself. Maybe I can relax a bit and then we can fix this hole that was left. I'm going to divide it into four. If the error is four centimeters, we can solve it by putting one centimeter on each sheet here, understand? Today we came to the park to compare if the black car really heats up much more than the white car in the sun. As the cars heat up, we'll monitor the temperature and other parameters. In the meantime, I'll line this area with aluminum. Underneath, I'm going to apply a layer of double-sided tape. A lot of tape goes here, and then a layer of aluminum foil on top. Stretching it to the max is tough. Once the aluminum foil contacts the tape, it adheres permanently. Look, it's far from perfect. The hope is that it will still work as a magnifying glass that will concentrate all the sun's rays more or less here. Because it has crooked things, somewhat irregular, it's obvious that it won't form a perfect point. Some will escape, but I think most will still concentrate on the right point. Uh, let's throw it here to see if our the sun is out again. It's a scorching heat here in Sao Paulo, but the cloud gets in the way when we're testing the thing. The light is focusing well on one point, but the sun isn't helping. I found another sunny day here in the manual. It's scorching, and I'm going to test without wind and such. I'm not very hopeful about this here. To tell you the truth, I need to confess to you that I can't find the exact point where the light is focusing. Let's try to put a smoke machine here and track this point. Smoke goes away when we do this here in the closed. At the time you can see things here, it's hard. With all this fog, I only came to two conclusions. First, this oven is not able to properly concentrate the solar rays, and that's why this marshmallow is not burning. I'm going to eat a smoky raw marshmallow. I gave up on the cardboard and will appeal. Check this out. Antenna of, of, what do you call this again? Subscription television. It's already becoming a thing of the past. This here is cheap, okay? We bought it used. You can probably find it in a junkyard, and the great advantage is that it's a piece of a perfect parabola. This here was studied properly and more. The thing already comes with a structure that throws all the light rays or electromagnetic wave rays here at the tip where the sensor is. So theoretically, there's not much that can go wrong. It's much smaller than the other one, so it captures less sunlight, but I think it will be able to concentrate much better. Buying used items often means no instruction manual or extra parts. I'm assembling it by sight, but I think I've got it under control. I won't cover it with aluminum foil. We had this here, which is a thermal blanket. It's sold for you to take on camping trips on hikes. If you have hypothermia, which is when it's very cold and your body can't overcome that cold, you wear this thing. See, it reflects the heat of your own body. In this case, it will reflect the sunlight itself. I think it's gonna work well. Let's try to use this here, see? It's a spray adhesive and then we put the blanket on top. The result wasn't perfect due to fitting a flat object onto a rounded surface. However, seeing my face in the reflection indicates that the light rays will converge to approximately the correct point. It only took half an hour to build this. By aligning the shadow with the sun, I can position it precisely. The small square must be concealed behind the pipe. Observe the focus point being projected onto the support. It became much easier.
There's even a little hole to put it here. Ah, now that's better. Let me see if the focus is better from the back. Yes, the focus seems fine. It should bake properly now. I, I knew it would work. Let's keep turning it. It's on fire! It's on fire! It's on fire! It's on fire! Now there's no way to get it out of here! Oh, 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 oh! Let's change the focus! If the marshmallow roasted on the solar fire isn't worth a thumbs up, I don't know what is. One very cool thing about this antenna is that its focal point isn't here in the middle. It's shifted over here, and this helps the light rays to arrive without the object that's here in front getting in the way. Oops, I can't aim it directly at the sun. Let me lower it a bit. It's perfect now for roasting our cheese curd here. Let's see if it goes faster than the marshmallow. The cheese has already smoked here. It started popping here. The cloud has arrived and it's beautiful. I think I didn't need to explain this, but if you're going to do it at home, first you have to use some eye protection. Staring at this too much burns, it's not possible. Even with protection, you have to look very little. And second, you should never stick your face where this piece of cheese is. Because otherwise, what happened here with the cheese will happen to your eye. If you leave it in the sun, it catches fire. But it didn't catch a strong fire. Ha 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 ha. Barbecuing in the sun shrunk the little thing. Let me check the crust. Hmm, it's good now. We have the solar grill. The food worked out. Let's see if it's good for fire too. This here is a 3D print that failed. Wow. Speak up, it's stronger than you thought, right? Shall we try the grand finale? Fried egg. Sunny side up egg with a firm yolk. The lid should have been washed before cooking. Something tastes off, like uranium or worms. The stove we made today is a cool and fun experiment, but it's not very practical for cooking something like rice, as it's rather complicated to use. We've already made another solar stove, which is more like a greenhouse, which is much more efficient if you want to play cooking. Take a look there. 